With more and more Americans out of work due to, well, that thing I'm not allowed to mention, YouTube felt that it was only right to make things more difficult for the people working from home. You would think right now that communication would be one of the most important things out there, considering that people are discouraged from going outside. So YouTube, ever the good guy, posted this to their creator blog. Protecting our extended workforce and the community. Yeah, because putting more people out of work definitely seems like a good way of protecting the extended workforce and the community. Today, as the unprecedented redacted situation continues, Google outlined how it's reducing the need for people to come into its offices while ensuring that its products continue to operate for everyone. We are committed to keeping the YouTube community informed about our actions related to redacted in a dedicated location in our help center. We will check out all of the blog, but first I wanted to take a look at the more important part. This is from their Twitter. They posted this from at Team YouTube. With fewer people to review content, our automated systems will be stepping in to keep YouTube safe. More videos will be removed than normal during this time, including content does not violate our community guidelines. We know this will be hard for all of you. So now, not only are we not allowed to know what the rules are, they are made purposely vague, but on top of that, now we're going to have our videos removed that don't even violate community guidelines. Why are rules even in place if they're not enforced, or if they're enforced overhandedly on purpose? Each day, more and more jobs close down, people are on temporary leave due to the situation that we're dealing with right now. And how does YouTube react? Keep in mind that some people, if not a lot of people, that are out of work also rely on YouTube as a supplemental income. As much as I might frown at that type of thing, and I typically like to keep this a hobby, people do rely on the money coming in, and the fact that YouTube is so quick to smack it out of people's hands when they are in their time of most dire need, it's beneath even their standards. So now that we have that bit out of the way, let's take a look at the full blog. We have teams at YouTube as well as partner companies that help us support and protect the YouTube community from people who respond to user and creator questions to reviewers who evaluate videos for possible policy violations. These teams and companies are staffed by thousands of people dedicated to helping users and creators. As the redacted response evolves, we are taking the steps needed to prioritize the well-being of our employees, our extended workforce, and the communities where they live, including reducing in-office staffing in certain sites. Our community guidelines enforcement today is based on a combination of people and technology. Machine learning helps detect potentially harmful content and then it sends it to human reviewers for assessment. As a result of the new measures we're taking, we will temporarily start relying more on technology to help with some of the work normally done by reviewers. This means automated systems will start removing some content without human review, so we can continue to act quickly to remove violative content and protect our ecosystem while we have workforce protections in place. As we do this, users and creators may see increased video removals, including some videos that may not violate policies. We won't issue strikes on the content except in cases where we have high confidence that it's violated. If creators think that their content was removed in error, they can appeal the decision and our teams will take a look. However, note that our workforce precautions will also result in delayed appeal reviews. We'll also be more cautious about what content gets promoted, including live streams. In some cases, unreviewed content may not be available via search, on the homepage or in recommendations. All eligible creators will still be able to monetize videos and this does not change the updates monetization of redacted, unless your game theory apparently, uh, related videos as we shared last week, and will continue to enforce our policies regarding redacted content including removing videos that discourage people from seeking medical treatment or claim harmful substances have health benefits. The situation with Redacted continues to change day by day and will continue to take steps needed to protect our teams and the communities where they live. This may affect additional types of YouTube user and creator support and reviews, such as applications for the YouTube Partner Program or responses on social media. To stay up to date on any changes in our services and our broader response to the Redacted, continue to check the Help Center. We recognize this may be a disruption for users and creators, but know that this is the right thing to do for the people who work to keep YouTube safe and for the broader community. We appreciate everyone's patience as we take these steps during this challenging time. Not that it's a surprise, but it seems that people who work physically at YouTube reviewing videos have preferential treatment over the people who provide content for the platform. My favorite part of all of this is their tweet where they say, we know this will be hard for all of you, yeah, because of you. People could easily review videos from back at home, so this seems like a bit of a BS excuse. 
more of an opportunity for them to get rid of more and more stuff that they just don't want on their platform, but they can't give a tangible reason why they don't. The part that I find most amusing about all of this is that it's entirely unnecessary. This is just a precaution to prevent them from getting another journalist snooping around asking, hey, how come you allow this sort of content or that sort of content? When really, journalists have no authority over anybody. It's all an illusion. Heaven forbid that YouTube just go, no, you don't get to control what we have on our platform. You don't get to have that right. Would it be too much to ask for YouTube to just stand behind their creators for once? I don't know what to say about this that I haven't already said a million times, but this seems to be a new low even for YouTube. Things can't be right all the time, but can they be right sometimes? I can only speak for myself, but I just want to make videos. I like to make people laugh, or try to make people laugh. The only people who should ever be catered to are the ones that keep the platform afloat. I don't really know what to say about this. I'm not surprised, but I am a bit disappointed. It would be nice if one of these corporations had our backs for once. You look at all the pandering that they do, all of the people they supposedly want to please, but it's all lip service. It's a personified company doing a song and dance to try to appeal to you, and most people buy it. But the people who keep the platform afloat, the people that keep uploading content consistently to the platform, their concerns are ignored, their concerns are ignored if acknowledged at all. For example, Sinatra says is still waiting for monetization to clear, despite him being a fairly straightforward news commentary channel. Revenge of the Sis is still waiting for their monetization. In both cases, YouTube is holding their money in some sort of account until it gets approved, and they just keep ignoring them. Ignore every attempt that they make in trying to contact them, and play as if they have no idea that they're holding on to a rather large sum of money for a single channel or content creator. We all know that the rules have never been applied unilaterally. A good example of this would be a week or maybe a few weeks ago where a humble hat salesman and weatherman had his monetization taken from him and then given back later that day. I've never seen anybody ever given that sort of treatment. Responded to and monetization restored within one day. To be clear, I'm not outraged at all that he got his money back. In fact, I'm happy he did. It's just frustrating that no one else seems to get that sort of treatment. But do you know who's not going to have to worry about this at all? Mainstream media people. All of these channels that are being promoted non-stop in the recommended feeds, your Late Night with Colbert or your Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, Good Morning America, things that you see on cable news. These people won't have to worry about these new guidelines at all because these rules do not apply to them. And that's not even me speaking out of the side of my neck. This is me being 100% genuine. The rules are not enforced against approved creators, you know, ones that are on cable news. Take, for example, the fact that Donald Trump uploads to YouTube on the White House channel. So under the new creator on creator guidelines, that would mean that Colbert, every time he spends a whole hour just making really bottom-of-the-barrel, low-hanging fruit criticism of Donald Trump, it could easily be found to be in violation of those new guidelines. This is one of many examples, and I'm sure most of you have thought about that once or twice. So really think about this for a second. YouTube and its infinite wisdom to protect its workforce, to protect its community, is putting people in more dire situations by limiting their income. To be fair, they did say that they won't issue out any strikes for any that are removed over these next few weeks. But even still, these new rules encourage people to doubt themselves on whether or not they should upload a video or say the thing they want to say. It could be hours of time wasted. But this whole thing, it just says a lot about the priorities over there at YouTube. They care far more about paying lip service to these journalists, these internet hall monitors that might take any opportunity to showcase false outrage about something they don't really care about. Well, that'll do it for this video, but I wanted to add something at the end of the video to promote my live streams, because I'm going to be doing those more often. I'll let you read between the lines in regards to that, but I'll be doing the Midnight Show more often, and I will be streaming throughout the day if I have nothing to do. Our live streams are a bit interesting, to say the least. I handed over my soundboard over to the chat, so you from chat can actually play the soundboards. You can play your Richard Spencer So Mad clips or your Bernie Sanders So Proud clips. It's been rather entertaining these past few streams. It's chaotic and it gives the chat a little bit more interaction with the show, so I enjoy it quite a lot. So if you're interested in checking out the live stream, it'll be on this channel at around 12.30 a.m. Pacific time, which will be 3.30 a.m. Eastern time. So 
in order to help balance things, I'll probably start doing the morning shows as well so that people from different time zones can catch a little bit of the show. And with that, you guys have yourselves a nice week. Take care of yourselves. Keep your minds about you. Remember, like Mr. Kipling said, if you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you but make allowance for their doubting too. Basically, keep a level head, everybody.